Hey, you. You like math? Not particularly. You like arcade games? Sometimes. Like math arcade games? I don't know. Sure you do, number munchers, fool. Yeah, dude man bro, munch on math. Well, seeing as it's called number munchers, that makes complete sense. I mean, what else would I munch on? <laughs> I'm not making that joke, that's too easy. The game was developed and released by MECC in 1990, and inside the box you got the game on a floppy disk, either five and a quarter inch or three and a half inch like this one here. You also get none other than the Number Munchers Manual, which is packed to the brim with all sorts of useless information. Want a quick startup procedure for people who hate to read manuals? Just read this manual. There you go. Flawless logic. It also lets you know about the extra material that could be purchased for classroom usage, as well as the fact that the game isn't copy protected, so please don't copy that Word Munchers floppy. Uh... Yeah, no worries. I wouldn't dream of copying Word Munchers when I own Number Munchers. The game begins with a title screen, letting you know that the game begins with a title screen. Hmm. You then dropped into the main menu, which is pretty bland, in this MS-DOS version at least. I am much more fond of the Apple II version since it has things for eyes to look at, and since that's what eyes are for, I find it to be shockingly appropriate. But for all intents and purposes, the games are the same beyond the menu aesthetics. Before you start, you'll definitely want to hop on over to the options so you can optimize the optional optionality contained within. Not only can you choose the difficulty level by grade and skill within said grade, but the individual game content that you'll come across while numbing the numerous numbers. Start a game and you're greeted with a short introduction of our hero, the Number Muncher, or Munchicus Digitus. A cutesy little green monster thing with a big mouth that you'll take control of momentarily. You're also introduced to the Troggles, five not-so-cute monsters that are hell-bent on screwing up your munching session in any way they can. Finally, you have the choice of five types of math games to play, multiples, factors, primes, equality, and inequality, followed by a challenge mode that mixes these up at random. Once you're in the grid, you take the reins of the muncher, who is controlled either by the arrow keys or the mouse, though I personally prefer the former. At the top of the screen, you're given a specific rule to follow for the current grid. In this case, things that equal 38. All you have to do is move the muncher around to the tiles that match the top of the screen's wishes, press space, and gobble it up. Once you've eaten every appropriate tile, you'll move on to the next. And that's honestly about it for number munchers. It's really that simple. Troggles will soon make their way onto the screen, though, and if they touch you, they will take one life. Not only that, but tiles they walk over will often change to something else after they've passed, either providing another answer for you to eat, or a garbage answer that just distracts you. Lose all your lives, either by receiving too many bad Troggle touches, or eating enough wrong answers and it's game over. And you do get the occasional reprieve from these grid spots with white highlighted corners. They randomly change as time goes on, but if you enter one, you're invulnerable to any Troggle attacks while it lasts, so that's decidedly not mean. Thanks, designers. And every three levels, you get a fun little cartoon animation, which, like the faux Latin monster names, is very Looney Tunes-esque, especially bringing to mind the Wily e. Coyote and Roadrunner cartoons. But really, that's it for Number Munchers, and you know what? I am not entirely enthused with this game. Sure, it works just fine, it's got some entertaining bits that I enjoyed as a kid, and it's better than just solving math problems on their own, but there really just isn't much to it. In fact, the follow-up game Word Munchers is just more of the same. Instead of math problems, you have word problems, which are just as problematic, where you'll have to choose the words that match the indicated vowel sounds. It's exactly the same gameplay with nothing new on offer. Except for the new things, like animated cutscenes, which, frankly, I find far less endearing than those in Number Munchers and even downright confusing. Uh, what, what, what was that? He caught a troggle with a shark fin? Well, good for you. I don't understand the humor. However, then you've got Super Munchers, The Challenge Continues, released in 1991. And this, this is what I'm talking about. You've got six categories of trivia to choose from in three difficulties, and of course, good old challenge mode. The gameplay is mostly the same, but this time you're really getting challenged from all sides, seeing as it's not just restricted to vowel sounds or fractions or whatever. 
Not that those don't have their place, of course, but with this monster-dodging arcade game, I just find more enjoyment in trivia than I do in solving logic problems. Not only that, but you have a new game mechanic, the Munch Meter, along the bottom of the screen. Fill it up by eating enough stuff, and a little blue transmogrification thing will appear, and once you enter it, you become the Super Muncher! Little green guy dons a little white cape and can fly around, giving the troggles a taste of their own medicine, at least until the munch meter runs out. It's just fun on the earlier levels, but before long, it becomes an absolute lifesaver when you're being violated by troggles from every which way. And this time, instead of a non-interactive cartoon every few levels, you get sent on a mission with the goal of getting closer and closer to some mad scientist castle. I don't know why, you just do it. Like one mission, you have to pick which Troggle is disguised, another you have to watch where a key is placed, then one where you have to memorize where certain words are hidden on a screen, and the last one where you must scale a cliff by flying upward, collecting numbers, and avoiding falling rocks and anvils, which is kinda clunky and I kinda don't like it. Once you complete all these, you'll reach the mad scientist's lab, and for some reason he turns his Frankenstein monster into a chicken. And that's it. Start over from the beginning of the game and continue playing for a high score. And that's the original Number Munchers series. I've liked all of these since I was a kid, even though it's Super Munchers that really keeps me coming back. Number and Word Munchers just get a bit monotonous before long, and even though they were fun back in the day, they don't hold my attention past that initial ooh, nostalgia feeling. But I'd actually still recommend Super Munchers, not only because it's got more varied gameplay, but the various trivia is just more interesting, if you ask me. Although some of it is a little outdated, but that's just the nature of trivia, so if you can put yourself in a 1991 mental state, you'll do just fine. Just be sure to come out of it when you're done with the game, because flannel is not the easiest to find anymore. So if you're in the mood for some arcade action, but for some reason feel a bit guilty about it, and desire a thin coat of educational paint on your game, you'll be hard-pressed to find something more fitting for this desire than the Munchers games. Thank <laughs> you.